Welcome to part 3 of the AI Plays Football tutorial series. Last time we left it off here after collecting a batch of experiences containing the information from our interactions with the game. So today let's continue. Uh, let's first understand what information did we exactly collect last time. First up, recall that we interacted with the environment for PPO steps. Uh, let's define this time steps and denote it by t. Then we used our actor model to decide an action based on observing the state. This is known as our policy uh, denoted by pi. Then we have collected states for each time step t. So let's denote the state of the game at time step t as s sub t. Same way, we'll denote the subsequent state or the next state as s sub uh, t plus 1. The action that our agent took at time t is denoted by a sub t. Now the values that we collected come from the critic model which takes a state as input. So let's denote it by a value function v of state s. Mask is denoted by m for time t. Recall that this indicates whether the game we are playing is done or not. For example, if we score a goal, the game is considered over and we need to reset the environment to restart the game. Rewards that we observed from our interactions with the game are denoted by R. And finally, the action probability that we have here comes from the actor model's last layer of the neural network. It is a 21 dimensional vector containing probability of each 21 actions available to us in this game. This is denoted by our policy function pi of s. Alright, now that we understand what we collected in the game, let's kick things up a notch. Now we want to use the rewards that we collected at each time step and calculate how much of an advantage we were able to obtain by taking this particular action. So if we took a good action like shoot towards a goal, we want to calculate how much better off we were by taking that action, not only in the short term, but also over a longer period of time. This way, even if we do not immediately score a goal in the next time step after shooting, we still look at time steps after that into the longer future to see if we scored a goal. In order to calculate this, we'll use an algorithm known as Generalized Advantage Estimation or GAE. So let's take a look at how this algorithm works using the information we have on the right here. First step, we initialize a variable known as GAE to zero. This denotes the advantage we obtained by taking a particular action. We start by looping backwards from the last time step to the first one. Next up, inside our loop, we define a delta to be equal to the reward that we obtained at that time step plus gamma times the value of being in the subsequent state due to our action multiplied by the mask because if the game is over, then the next state in our batch will be from a newly restarted game. So we do not want to consider that and therefore mask equals to zero will help with that. Note that gamma is nothing but a constant known as discount factor in order to reduce the value of the future state since we want to emphasize more on the current state rather than a future state. Consider this as scoring a goal in present is more valuable than scoring a goal in future. Hence, we discount future goals so that we can put more weight or value to the present goal. And finally, we subtract the value of current state from this discounted value of future state, thereby giving us a delta for time step t. The value of gamma suggested in the PPO paper is 0.99. Next, we update the value of GAE to be equal to the delta we obtained previously, plus gamma times lambda times the mask times the GAE from the previous iteration of the loop. Here, lambda is a smoothing parameter used for reducing the variance in training, which makes it more stable. The value of this smoothing parameter suggested in the paper is 0.95. Hence, this gives us the advantage of taking an action both in the short term and in the long term. 
Now we'll just define return of taking an action in a particular state as the GAE of that time step plus adding back the value given by the critic for being in that state. We'll see where to use the returns later on in this series. Okay, on to the last step. Just reverse the list of returns since we were looping from the last time step to the first so that we obtain back the original order. This is basically the GAE algorithm that we will implement now in our code. Let's continue our code from where we left off last time. Let's first prepare the input tensor for the last state that we observed in our game. Then we get Q value equals to model critic dot predict state input. This gives us the Q value of the last state we observed in the game because if you notice inside the loop, we obtained this observation but exited the loop before running it through the critic model. So let's append this value to our list of values. Now notice that this makes our values less the length of total time steps plus one. So it's 128 plus one or 129 in our case. Uh, rest of the lists like rewards, actions, states, etc. are all 128 in length. Now we are ready to calculate the advantages and returns from the GAE algorithm that we just saw. Let's call the method get underscore advantages and pass as arguments the batch of values, masks and rewards we obtained from the loop. We need to define this function now. So let's go to the top and do that. Okay, first let's initialize empty list of returns. Then initialize GAE equals to zero. Now we loop backwards from the last to the first time step. So let's use the inbuilt uh, list reverse function. Now we define the delta according to the formula. Immediate reward at current time step plus gamma. Let's define a constant gamma here. Uh, gamma equals to 0 0.99. So we have gamma times values of i plus 1 since this is a value of the future state and times the mask. So if mask is 0 here, we won't consider value of next state as that is the start of a different game. And finally, we subtract value of current state. Now we can move on to the next step. GAE equals to delta plus gamma times lambda underscore. This is the smoothing parameter. Let's set it to 0 0.95 times mask times the current value of GAE. Now we can append to, sorry, uh, insert into the returns list at position zero. In so it's, it's in the correct order. And we can add back the value that we subtracted earlier in the loop. Now let's just obtain the advantages in an array convert list of returns to array. Minus values 
for in minus one. Uh, this is because remember we added the value of the last state, making this list one time step longer than the rest of the lists in the batch. Okay, now let's return returns, comma advantage, but we need to normalize this. So let's subtract mean and divide by standard deviation. Make sure to add some residue here so that we do not get a divide by zero error. Okay, coming back down here, we can now collect the returns and advantages that we calculated for our batch. We now have everything we need in order to train our actor and critic models. So in the next part of this series, we will see how to use this information to calculate a custom PPO loss and use that custom loss function for training the actor model. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you are able to keep up. And if not, let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions. And until then, I'll see you next time.